I'm sorry, but did I never mention better off with you? Hi everyone, it's Matt here from Music Speaks and today I've got the great privilege of talking to Vincent Turner, better known to everyone as Frank Music. So, how are you? Good, thanks. Really good. Good. Um, what's new with you at the moment? I've had, um, I mean, I know I've had the great privilege of hearing about four uh, new unreleased songs at the moment and understand there's a new album in the pipeline, but yeah, what's new? What's, what's happening? Uh, the album, that's all that's happening. Uh, I'm just working through it at the moment. I've just got about... I want to say 13 tracks. I'm still writing though. Um, I, I want to explore a couple of um, sort of songwriting and production styles that I haven't really tried yet, but what kind of recently have been excited by, which are a bit more sort of soulful and um, a bit jazzy. But I want to, um, there's a few artists on SoundCloud who are doing some stuff that kind of interested me that I wanted to see if I could try my hand at. So I'm just going to do that and then uh, we're going to compile all the music and uh, take the 10 or 11 best tracks. Nice. Um, of, of the ones I've heard, I've definitely heard a sort of maybe a return to maybe sort of your earlier stuff, maybe in a slightly more mature sound, if you don't mind me saying, but um, where do you take that inspiration from and, and for what you're doing now and everything and how are you? Um, well, I mean, you just kind of, I just make albums and, um, you know, each, the previous albums have been very autobiographical um, and uh, I, on this particular record, I wanted to steer clear of being so specifically autobiographical and be um, go back to an earlier sort of songwriting style where my music still had a personal touch but you could listen to it without necessarily knowing this, the exact specifics of what it was referring to in my own life yeah. so um, I wanted it to be a little bit more um, open to interpretation rather than it being so acute and, and clear about what it is so the music is hopefully a little bit more um, inviting yeah. to people. Um, but really, I just I, it's gone from me making music just for myself as an individual to making music for you know people who just enjoy hearing music. It's yeah. a less cathartic experience and a more um, sharing experience, shared experience. Wow. <laughs> nice. Have you got any ideas for a new title for the album or anything like that? Or are you... oh, yeah, the, the title is uh, Not Right Now. Nice. And um, that's been the title um, for, for some time now. We decided to stick with, with that. So um, it, it's, it's, it's also, it kind of leads the, the vibe of the record, which was um, Not Right Now. It was, at the time, kind of meant like... I didn't want to have any sort of contact with the world or anything like that. Um, and now it's kind of turned into this sort of like tongue in cheek, like not right now, sort of like you're not now because the music industry is so desperately clinging to new and wonderful gimmicky things all the time. And uh, I'm, of course, one of the, uh, you know, people who has the experience of being chewed up and spat out of yeah. this said structure and um, it's quite funny being one of the rare few who gets to continue. Um, I was going to say you've come out quite on top from it in, in, in some ways so it's it's can't be that bad <laughs> now. It's fucking awful. I mean it, it's uh, the, just with anyone as, as my manager always tells me that there's there's a hell of a lot of fronting that, that goes on on the internet yeah. and a lot, a lot of posturing and um, the reason why there's so few that succeed is is because it's it's horrible. Um, mm. If if the rejection isn't you know enough to, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not asking for sympathy, but it, it's it's interesting the the process of what occurs after the the drop happens. You have the wonderful um, reaction from sort of either the press or you know fans or not fans being like you're a commercial flop. Mm. Uh, these are the same people who will generally accuse you of selling out. So. If you're yeah. not selling out, you, the same people are saying, well, you didn't sell enough. So if, once you get past the ridiculous hypocrisy of the general public, um, which I love, by the way, of course, <laughs> um, it's not their fault. They just don't know. Um, and I, I don't expect anyone to know because they don't need to know. It's yeah. just interesting, the response that you get from people. And the journey is one that you can only carry on if you have the tools to do it. And thankfully, I was always a producer and a writer whether I had you know, a, a major label behind me or not. And 
that was a great apprenticeship. It was a great introduction into the industry. I learned a fuckload of stuff from it. And, um, you know, I, I'm just the same Vince I was before. I'm, you're interviewing me in the same room that I made all of my albums in, in, in my nan's house. And I just carry on. Nice. One way or the other. <laughs> Well, I, I'm still enjoying listening to what you're doing, so I think, and I think I'm sure many other people are. So yeah, I'm definitely pleased you're carrying on. <laughs> um, you've worked with some pretty cool people in the past. Like, have you got anyone new in the pipeline you're working with, or anything like that? Um, yeah, the uh, well, actually, I suppose I should do a um, a I don't even know what you call it um, a promo thing for um, Colette Carr. I think her single just came out uh, yesterday. Um, her EP. Um, it's. I think there's a free download on iTunes. The song is called Static. Uh, the EP is called Static Star. I produced the whole album um, no, no. last year, and um, they're just starting to put the music out now. And um, yeah, that that's. Uh, to be honest, with you, I think a lot of that album has actually had an influence um, on this album in terms of the production style because I was in America for um, six months, just sort of hanging out and stuff like that. I, you know, I got a taste of, you know, that sort of vibe again, uh, and I've always been told I have a soulful vocal, so um, I wanted to explore some of the more R and B, hip hop y elements. But really, I, I hate genres with a passion, and I just I'm making music that interests me. And if it just happens to sound a bit trappy or a bit hip hop y, that there's no nothing to it apart from that's just what I like right now. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, you've done like sort of gigs across the world and things. What what makes a show particularly amazing for you? Like what? Yeah. A live show. Um, what makes a particularly good live show is um, well, there's two perspectives because you have the perspective of the audience of what they think makes a great live show, and then me, and they sometimes kind of coalesce and overlap with each other. So for me, what makes a great show is good stage presence and a fantastically rock solid band behind you. Mm -hmm. um, well rehearsed, well trained, um, just fantastically spot on, no mistakes, and, in, and appearing to enjoy themselves. And that translates into the audience, mm -hmm. where that adds to what also makes a good show, in my opinion, where they start to resonate with it. Um, I prefer stages that are more like sort of at the same level as the audience rather than big risers, because yeah. I feel like you, you're dislocating from the fan base. I mean, I get it for big venues like arenas and stuff, but I prefer a sort of more intimate experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, I like to be able that. to smell the fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, which country has got the most die-hard fans, do you think? Um, it's definitely a split between the UK and the US. Yeah. Um, the, the, I, I, I don't know, I mean, you, you find some real random like diehards all over the place with any fan base. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, US and UK probably. Nice. Um, what are some of the best things that have come out of Frank Music for you, do you think? Uh, learning. I mean, that's, that's all any of us are really here to, to really do and be able to hopefully pass some of that on to someone else when, before you, you know, leave your mortal coil. <laughs> Um, and for me, it's a bucket load of learning every week. Every day is a job interview when you're an independent artist. Yeah, yeah. You can't rest on any laurels. You have to wake up every day, and every day is a new challenge, a new problem. I'm not saying that signed artists don't have that problem. It's just when you don't have the, the joy of a regular income, um, it keeps you on your toes, but it also makes sure that you don't get lazy either. So if you're lazy, then nothing happens. Um, since my first album, I've released four since. So, um, and that's only in five years. So it's nearly an album a year. And that's the only way you survive is the, you know, everyone, everyone is so click, 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 click. Mm. Um, it's not about trying to um, grab someone's attention. It's about maintaining some level of attention, you know, across the board. So if someone does discover you five years from now, it's like, oh, well, they've been doing all this too, and, mm -hmm. and there's, there's an ex, a story to explore and an, an emotion that can be added to the journey that they've seen. Whereas if you're just someone who's come out of nowhere and there's no backstory, it's much harder to invest in that kind of an artist. Yeah, of course. Has anything really scary ever happened to you on tour or anything? Yeah, I mean, um, 
Uh, I, I, I feel bad bringing it up for the guy, but I mean, there was one guy who was like my tour manager and um, it was one of my earliest tours and he kind of just it's kind of had a nervous breakdown and kind of like tried to have a fight with me in a car park for no reason. He kind of had to be taken away by police and I'm totally not going to say who it is because yeah, yeah. that would be really me. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty fucking messed up. That's, that's, that's quite scary. <laughs> um, have you got any disgusting habits? Uh, yeah, many. Uh, swearing is, is a big one. Um, uh, I'm sure that flatulence would be another, but I think, <laughs> I think, I think all boys are guilty of that. Yeah. Um, and uh, playing my music far too loud yeah. uh, is another disgusting habit of mine, but it's, it's an occupational hazard, so there we go. <laughs> um, what, what is your usual process then for writing or recording a new oh, track? Oh, yeah. album, get, like, get that question a lot. And, yeah. um, Feel free to not answer it. No, 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 it's a good one. It's good. I mean, as you can tell, I like talking. Um, so, yeah, okay. Because I'm a producer, writer, engineer, if I was just like a songwriter, the process would be a lot simpler. But because, like, I always feel bad for artists who come and work with me because I end up producing for them as well when they're only here to write. Because sometimes I just like to make a beat because I don't have any song ideas, and sometimes the production inspires a song, or I might actually have a song idea and only need to sit at the piano. Or sometimes I might do them simultaneously where I'm kind of making a beat for like an hour, and then I'm kind of writing a song over the top of it for an hour. And um, it's about trying to, to actually avoid routine, because when you get into routine, you stop thinking originally, and original thought is kind of everything that I think any creative should be striving for. Um, what really grinds your gears? Um, inertia. No, um, what really grinds my gears? Um, so many things, I just, we just don't have long enough. Bad manners. Bad, bad manners is, is like my top one yeah. big, big problem I have with the world. It's like if someone said to me once, everyone should have manners because they, they cost you nothing. So, uh, yeah, bad manners. Can't stand it. <laughs> um, is there anything other than music that you're really passionate about? Oh, yeah. Um, but it's just having the time uh, to be passionate about it. Um, I like reading when I can. I only read Terry Pratchett. Um, I, I am massively into riding bikes. It's another thing. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd. I'm actually I'm a huge nerd. I love computer games. Um, when I can, I'll jump on my Steam account now and then and uh, see what's happening and peruse the new games. Nice. That's about it. Yeah. Cool. Do you, uh, do you ever have any like secret cravings, things that you have to eat or anything? Oh, yeah. Uh, Marmite. Marmite has to be my, 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 top, my top thing. Uh, love yeah. Marmite. It's, my, it's the best. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Marmite fan. I'm with you on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can you remember the first song you ever sung live, and what was it? Like? Yeah, yeah, I can. Um, I was, I mean, as Frank Music, the first song I ever sang, sung live was um, In Step, I think, and it was at a pub called The Half Moon in, oh God, I want to say Balham, but it's not Balham, it's, it's on the way to Dulwich, and um, it might actually be Dulwich, and... Uh, that's actually where I met this person who introduced me to the manager that got me my first record deal. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> what's, what's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you in life, generally? Mm, I can't remember the most embarrassing off the top of my head. I think it was when, I think one, I, an embarrassing, pretty embarrassing one for me was like, uh, I was wearing this tracksuit or something by a designer once again, not naming names, and uh, they were at this party that I was also at, and um, it was like a sort of a, it was a, it was a, like a, it was a horrible tracksuit, and um, and this person came up to me and was like, "Oh, love your tracksuit," and I'm like, "I don't. I'm just wearing it because it's. It, I got it like from TK Maxx, really cheap, and it looks ironic." And then I walked off, and then my friend was like, oh, my God, like, what did they say to you? I'm like, they just asked me where my tracksuit was from, and I said, it sucked. And it turned out that the person who asked me was the person that had designed that tracksuit. <laughs> that's, that's quite cringe. Yeah. <laughs> um, what music have you been listening to most recently? Uh, what music have you been listening to most recently? Oh, goodness. Uh, apart from my own, 
Um, I'm, I've mainly been, I've got a second screen here, that's why I keep looking over to the right. Um, I'm looking literally on YouTube to see what I have been looking at. I've been listening to um, Trevor Something, and it is an album called Trevor Something Does Not Exist. I've been listening to, been listening to another guy called Com Trues, which is basically Tom Cruise, spelled the wrong way around. And um, that's the album Galactic Melt. Um, I've been listening to a lot of music, basically, that um, sounds like it should be on the Drive soundtrack. Okay. So very 80s, new wave kind of synth uh, dance music. Um, very, very 80s, very kind of chip tuny in places. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, what's the best advice? Oh, sorry, been... sorry. And Selena Gomez, of course. How oh, yeah. I... <laughs> of course. Um, what's the best advice you think you've ever been given? Um, no one has a magic wand. Okay. Uh, that that's, that's, sounds like it's dripping with um, entendre, but um, <laughs> it's 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 not meant to be. Um, someone who I've you know, has had a huge impact in my music life um, is uh, Stuart Price, and um, it's a shame we don't stay in touch. But uh, he really had a massive uh, impact in my music production and, and way of looking at, at the art of making music. And he said that to me. He was like, look, you know, no one has a magic wand. So just remember to rely on yourself more than ever relying on other people. And that, that, that is something that echoes with me probably forever. Nice. Um, well, I've got one more thing. Did, would you, are you up for a game of Would You Rather or not? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Um, so I've got three different levels. I've got a bit of a tame level, an awkward level, and then a kind of what the fuck. Um, so, uh, tame is, have, would you rather have a third eye or a third arm? Third arm, definitely. <laughs> Produce more. Yeah, you just... <laughs> I don't know um, I... Would you rather go through life and be unable to answer any questions or, not, or unable to ask any questions? Ooh. Um, well... Probably I would want to go through life not being able to answer any questions, and mainly for the benefit of the rest of the world. <laughs> okay. Would, would you rather be uh, super strong or super fast? Super fast, definitely. Because if you're really fast, you can then get super strong. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's really that's Really fast on a treadmill and then get really strong. Uh, <laughs> um, would you rather live in a Disney universe or a Looney Tunes universe? Disney, of course. Yeah, I mean, me it's too. not even a question. Are you kidding? <laughs> Send um, me wherever Aladdin lives right now. <laughs> right. Um, right, awkward then. Would you rather always speak your mind or never speak again? I mean, always speak my mind. Good, good. Always. <laughs> um, have right. to listen to Gangnam Style or Harlem Shake for the rest of your life? Uh, Gangnam Style, actually, just because it has a better dance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm with you on that. <laughs> Um, have your thoughts broadcast so everyone knows what you're thinking all the time or never be allowed to wear clothes again but be able to keep your thoughts to yourself never be allowed to wear my clothes again and keep because <laughs> I'm as good as naked if everyone knows my thoughts right <laughs> okay and then the WTF level um, would you rather discover life on another planet or find out once and for all if God was real oh well that answers itself, because if I could discover life on another planet, then my God question wouldn't need to exist. Yeah. For me, anyway, I'm sure other theological-minded people would disagree with that statement, but there we are. <laughs> um, <laughs> would you rather make out with a horse or suck a cow's udder? Um, well, I basically suck a cow's udder every day when I eat <laughs> cereal and drink coffee, so I'll just go for that. <laughs> um, eat a live slug or drink a pint of off milk? Oh, because I know how bad off milk. Can, yeah, <laughs> it gets. Re it, it, it's almost like piss. Yeah. Um, I, I'll I will take that over the slug because slugs are rank. Yeah. <laughs> um, and would you rather use sandpaper for toilet paper or vinegar for eye drops? Ah, ah! <laughs> I'd use the sandpaper because I'd turn it over and the other side's fine. See, you've got logic. <laughs> I would never have thought of that. <laughs> um, okay, well, that's that's all of my questions, basically. Cool. Um, so thanks very much for taking the time to talk to me. Not Genuinely a problem. Genuinely been a Sorry real pleasure. So
Um, so, and yeah. yeah, I'm so excited to see what you got in store for everyone, and good luck with the, the new album and everything. Um, maybe I can come and review a gig or something sometime. Yeah. But, yeah. Awesome, dude. All right, nice one. Well, have a great rest of your week. And, Thank uh, you very much. Let me know when it's gone up and stuff. Will do. All right, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye.